Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our Against the Hive campaign where a couple of Chet soldiers uh, are growing their manly chest here whilst fighting against super hardcore aliens, specifically chrysalids, with nothing but their mere net uh, wet noodle pistols aka uh, ballistic weapons. And the chats for this particular mission will be the only ones that we do have available. We quite literally do have no one else available. So Hogbite together with Lyrical is uh, running the show this time. We got an assault infantry uh, with Lyrical. I gave her the tracer rounds that we found uh, lately. Hogbite got uh, one of the vests. I figured we kind of more or less evenly distribute the hit points. Universe being a squaddy got the second vest so Lyrical sort of needs to fem mode it and just go through it and Bastard took the short end of the stick uh, aka just a normal weapon nothing else and uh, a couple of warm wishes good luck for the rookie as a typical red shirt situation of uh, Star Trek where the new guy gets uh, the base equipment and might not make it out of the mission. Some supplies for ourselves. Very good. Bradford is as eager as ever to tell us that we can finally pick up some supplies. Well, that's good to hear. Ooh, look at that. Uh, this is a new tile. Wow. That looks really good. Oh, new jungle maps. Hell yeah. That actually looks really good. I am thoroughly enjoying the new map tiles. This um, bridge here looks like a bit of a trap. It's a very long bridge without any cover. Great for shootouts and snipers. Not so good for anyone else. And I sincerely hope that it is non-breakable terrain. Because uh, elsewise this looks like there is no floor. It's straight up going uh, down. Okay, cool. So, move up. We got a 2x2 two two approach. I totally am digging the whole fog. I am not so clear why exactly we're seeing resistance operatives here. Okay, but we're definitely seeing chrysalids and we're seeing a couple of civilians as well. Well, the only way how this could be even remotely were... Oh, what? There's a tank. Ooh. I think this is unfortunately only decoration. Part of me somehow wants to enter the vehicle and just operate its gun and then you hear a boom, boom as uh, the massive gun just blows away the um, the vehicles there so good news the bridge itself cannot be destroyed bad news everything else okay around the bridge can bastard moves up to victory. oh but takes an aggressive move forward well those turrets first and foremost do have a truckload amount of uh, armor and why are there, conveniently enough, so many uh, mm, targets for the chrysalids to, to hit and kill? And then, why are the turrets not fighting back? Well, 
lots of questions. I'm sure there are reasonable answers. Bastard moves over. Yeah, we're not going to take that yet. I'm all over it. As you order. For now, we're just moving up and next turn it's going to be a bit more serious. My senses are key. Little chrysalid rippers are just on the way uh, to spot us out. Okay, now the turrets finally fight back. By the way, totally great strategy to stand in the open. Yep, worked like a charm. It does work like a charm every single time. Okay, this is a dangerous but yet interesting proposal. Put some mine there. Very good. Got a gas grenade, but we also got a frag grenade. Uh, the gas grenade would shred one. I think, except uh, if they changed it. Can't double check it now, but in normal XCOM they would shred one. Which is a bit counterintuitive, but it still works, right? Uh, hmm. We gotta deal with the turrets. They are a pain. That's one option. Turrets are already triggered, so we can't really quote unquote untrigger them. We do not have shredding. Let's see if the gas grenade shreds. How does that hit a friendly target? How? Friendly fire. Like what, the advent turret is friendly? Okay, let's see. Still shreds? I uh, don't need to trigger it yet. There is a 33% chance of instantly killing the turret. Of course, didn't happen. Um, could kill the drone and then calmly move back to here let's first of all get rid of the turret okay now secondly if we're moving in further We're immune to poison. Uh, 
move all the way over here or we're just parrying. Turret has two shots. I think we're just going into full cover. All right, end of turn. That's the Hive coming in. All right, the turret finds a different pastime uh, leisure activity than shooting on Hawk, uh, onto Hawkbite. It instead targets some of the civilians. Successfully so. Enemies moving on our position. Ah, uh, not good. We get we get way more rippers. But uh, bastard. Just man emotes it and very successfully manages to avoid it. A steady signal from the transponder. Firebrand is en route to make the pickup. So that would be a two for one. Which if you think about it isn't really that bad, right? It's actually decent. Need to mark this one here. Advent's locator is down and our transponder is active. Firebrand will handle the pickup. Could have moved a bit further. Kill them. Bessert. Yeah, could have used the grenade um hmm that's a solid kill We can parry from here. That'll buy, buy us some time against the uh, turret. All right, Lyrical. Make sure. Uh, we do have the reinforcements cut off and now it is time to witness how the first crate is gone but we're still very much in the fight all good i'm trying to get some xp mainly and since we've already secured the first two crates we're actually okay is on deck for recovery. Keep marking those crates, Metis 1-5. Okay, we need to deal with the overwatching turret. And uh, the single best way of doing that is by actually taking a shot at it. Very good. Look like a charm. We got an enemy back here. And Bastard moves up. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, Hogbite just man modes it. Crit. Hell yeah. Okay, cool. Good job, Hogbite. I'm not marking the crates yet, mainly because uh, this one here could have been marked. So far the Hive is just sending their underpowered small rippers and a drone here and there. Good, we, on the other hand, can use this time to move up, mark supplies, don't forget to reload, I'm preaching that in almost every single video of mine. Memory is overwatching, and we're good. <laughs> oh. Hogbite uh, takes a shot with his auto pistol. Well, you can say whatever you want about Hogbite's uh, pistol skills, but they are still better than a not hitting resistance operator. Hogbite continues to move up, like a giga chat, he is casually uh, making sure that this crate here is uh, being extracted, and then just, just outright stuns the guy. Good, we're carefully moving up, there is another crate over here, one which I really would like to get. The resistance operative just reloaded and that was about it. I tell you what, we're going in. Let's get the crate here. I'm not sure if we have just managed to get all of them. This would be a dangerous, very dangerous move. Hmm. Greed versus danger. I think we're going to tr give it a try okay paid out this time Got it, moving. Namri got uh, another another crate and I think with the exception of the two rippers that are at the starting location now Pretty much good to go. Haven't had such a successful extraction in a very long time. Typically when I play these missions we're getting like one or two crates but this time it actually worked out really really well. It makes me question whether I selected a hard enough difficulty but I will be humble and not make any comments because I'm pretty sure very soon the hive will uh, pick up specifically since we can't upgrade our weapons uh, we are very much at the mercy of whatever we currently have
good so that's one crate there oh the other crate was all the way back well we'll get that one Ce la posso fare? Overwatch, 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 and yeah, hope I just gets down here as well. I think it's time for us to move out. Ten for us, two for Advent. Seems like a really good split. of the supply crates in this area. Menace one five, you're clear for evac. We got what we came for, so don't take any unnecessary chances out there. That is exactly what I was thinking as well. Is this actually going to be our second flawless mission in this run? Hard to believe. Firebrand is returning to base. Unbelievable. Flawless mission. So, first thing, if we're fighting against enemy th uh, enemies with higher armor, uh, this is uh, starting to be a problem. The typical shredder that I'm always relying on is not available. We got another tech specialist. I like it. Fits very well for Bastard and Miracle got a promotion. So let's remind ourselves we got Zone of Control the last time. This time we do have Breaching Maneuver. Gets one partial movement action. Refunded after turn ending attack. On a flanked, stunned or disoriented target. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's a better version of Implacable. That's actually really good. I val I personally value Implacable. Gain plus two mobility when run and gun is activated and the cooldown is reduced by one. Well, cooldown is five at the moment. It would be four and three uh, with a light offhand weapon. Get one partial movement action after turn ending melee attack Ooh, that one is that one is very very strong think about it you could uh, go in it's almost like giving them the templar ability wow okay The only reason why we haven't used this here was because we were not sure if we're actually going to use um, grenades. I like that one. After turn ending attack on a flank, stunned or disoriented target. I think we're going to go with it. Flank condition can only trigger when enemy can take cover, okay. So for the enemies that can't take cover it will not trigger. But it will trigger for stunned or disoriented targets. Well that's fair enough I guess. Very interesting um, option. PC has superior conditioning, oh hell yeah. That's a good one. I could be a jerk and give that PCS directly to Hogbite, which would be my initial uh, focus to give him more health. But I think we're actually giving it to Lyrical, which will make her 
with 10 hit points, uh, yeah, pretty much on par with what you would normally expect uh, from a storm uh, from a storm uh, trooper with medium armor. Squad size increased by one. Uh, that's a no-brainer. Good, and here we got an assault QCB, uh, CQB drills. All assault infantry soldiers QCB dominance proficiency will now start at level 2, regardless of rank. Hmm. Let's double check. What does that even mean? Oh, it will start at level 2. Okay, so I see. Every single one of them immediately gets uh, plus 10 to defense, critical hit, uh, and the radius is 5 tiles instead of 4. Oh, okay. So what, what this is essentially doing is it it makes the base QCB drill better. Is there kind of QCB drills too? Okay, cool. So the new skills don't, do not necessarily make the soldiers any better. It will just mean that newcomers will have a higher, um, higher baseline, which I think is actually quite good. I like that design. It will not creep the power in the end game, but it will equally make it less punishing in later stages of the game to take, say, a squaddy or a, cor a corporal into one of uh, these missions. Speaking about which, if you just look at our team, we are... Our roster is very much under pressure. Commander, we've just made contact with a new faction of the Resistance known as the Reapers. They're an elusive bunch, but this is their headquarters. We can scan at this location now to start benefiting from our newfound cooperation. Mm -hmm. We may have chosen a different means of resistance. My people have thrown off the shackles of alien oppression. And through discipline, we have survived. We don't rely on the aliens' technology, and we would never live in their cities. We are the hunters. Well, that's all good for you. Darktown Oxus <coughs> gets a promotion and now has fire discipline. He becomes a marine. I like that. <coughs> I think the one topic that I have not yet enforced enough is color coding. We had Alessandro here, for instance, and he's a tech specialist, so <coughs> he should carry himself as a tech specialist. Very good. Cool. Now all of a sudden it looks much more serviceable. We're having a, a roster with less tired, less lightly wounded uh, soldiers, so that's good. In terms of what we wanted to do, Black Market would be great. The loot would not be bad. Three rookies would be fantastic. What do we do first? I'll do a little trick here. Starting to scan it so that it does not disappear. And we're going for the rookies first. Because we need a deeper roster, we're going to have losses. We completed our research in remarkable time, Commander. That is good. We just don't have the proving ground to put it up. <clears throat> but we got our first breakthrough, one that is quite important. Oh, by the way, I forgot something. Mm. We wanted to make contact. That actually has priority. I still save the other two skins so that they're not disappearing. It's important to make contact before the supply drop. Oh, 
Okay. Tracy here is a field medic now. Welcome to the team. And we have no further soldiers to train, which further promotes the idea of having the rookies. New objective added. Commander, we've established contact with the local resistance and we can move on the advent. Good. The importance why I wanted to have this is we're now clocking 200 plus income. That will nicely go on top of that. Keeping tabs on all our operations, Commander. And our we're continuing with the rookies. Commander, we've received word that the aliens have completed a facility devoted to their work on the Avatar project. If we can establish contact with the local resistance well, forces in no shit, Sherlock. We the aliens are making progress on the Avatar project. The Thanks, Brett Ford. For summarizing that so nicely for us. Got an urgent communication coming in for you now, Commander. I had high hopes for resistance under your leadership, Commander. Okay, he's potentially going to train. No, wait, sabotage, and then train next time. Um, lightning reflex is bad. Collateral is bad as well, and I don't know what the third one is, but the first two are already quite not so good. New recruits, 15 supplies. That could actually help us to fill out our roster for one the benefits we gain from working with the resistance for one month. Covert operations are a major boon to our efforts, but there are also risks involved. We'll get a promotion and a soldier's bond. I like what I'm seeing. So. Field medic, field medic could work together with uh, Johnny here. Uh, it's okay if someone gets wounded, it is what it is. But having that extra bond isn't bad. Can't yet do that. And power relay construction isn't so important. I would rather want to have you guys back in nine days with a solid promotion. Covert is our specialty. Let's just hope your people can keep up. Good. We got 400 uh, supplies there. Let's get the rookies first, then we get the supplies, then we do the black market. Since we're all friends now, maybe you could lend my people a hand. Oh nice, look at that. We got two zappers and an engineer. That's actually a really good uh, combination. More grenades will be helpful and 104 intel. Gather survivors from an abandoned hive uh, in an infested city. The losts are still a problem. Very much so. But... What else? Yeah, the losts are very much a problem. But we get two corporals and both of them would be sappers. If we look at the classes, we need more assaults. Only got a lyrical here. We got okay amount of medics, marines. We already got an okay amount of zappers, but two extra wouldn't uh, hurt. But we need assaults and, and marksmen predominantly. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Modular assault rifle is halfway through. I am quite happy about that. Not doing this upgrade yet New and in matter. terms of building stuff we could actually go with another nanoscale vest Tell me something, doctor. 
that extra hit point comes in handy when we are trying to not die and since we're trying to not die and uh, make that more of a successful run i will need all of your support so if you could uh, slingshot the like button and leave a comment down below it would be much appreciated uh, in the meantime take care have a great day and see you in two days bye bye